Hey everyone, as I mentioned in the previous video, after successfully assembling the car and testing my cat's reaction times, I wanted to check if the car is physically symmetric and ensure that the weight is balanced between the left and right sides. Using the corner weight scales, I already checked the weight distribution and it was pretty good. Now it's time to make sure that the wheels are aligned properly on both sides. There are a couple of adjustments that can be made to the way the wheels are positioned without disassembling parts of the car. The assembly instructions recommend a certain baseline setup. This setup refers to the camber and toe angles of both the rear and front wheels. For those who are new, it is necessary to briefly explain what camber and toe are. Camber is the angle of the wheels in relation to the vertical axis of the car. It can be positive, where the top of the wheels leans out, or negative, where the top of the wheels leans in. Toe is the angle of a wheels in relation to an axis along the length of the car. It can be toe out, where the front of the wheels point away from each other, or toe in, where the front of the wheels point towards each other. My initial research showed that setting those camber and toe angles depends on many factors, like the car itself and its weight distribution, the tires, the track surface and layout, and even the driving style. At some point, I'll need to make a follow-up video on how these specific factors affect the recommended car setup. But for now, I just want to establish the initial baseline. One very important step to take before using the Sky RC setup station for adjusting camber and toe angles is to ensure your ride height is set correctly. The recommended way to measure the ride height is to drop the car from about a foot and let it roll forward slightly. Alternatively, you can just push it down. I found it settles at the same height. As you can see, after assembling the car, I did not set the ride height to the recommended 19 millimeters. My height was way too low and I was likely hitting the surface with the bottom plate and losing traction without realizing it. So, I had to adjust the shock collars quite a bit on all sides. This makes the springs tighter, which then makes the car settle at a higher height. This ride height gauge shows the number in addition to 10 millimeters. So if a five slides under, then it means 15 millimeters height. I finish adjustments when it is 19 millimeters on all sides. Now, Let's take the Sky RC setup station and start assembling the pieces. This particular model is made for one-tenth scale off-road cars. There are a couple more versions for on-road cars and for one-eighth scale cars. They have slight variations in the size and shape of their parts. The setup station consists of four stands, one for each wheel. Each stand is made of two pieces that are attached perpendicularly to each other by a screw. There is a bearing that allows one piece to rotate freely and there is a little wheel on the bottom that prevents that piece from being stuck against the table surface. All right, all four pieces are assembled. Now I actually need to remove the wheels since the pieces are getting attached directly to the axles. Then using a nut, each piece is securely attached flat against the hex of a wheel's axle, which ensures the proper angles. The set also comes with two spacers for the rear axles. When all four pieces are attached, the car is suspended on the stands. Just like with the corner scales, it is important to have the car in the condition in which it will be driven, which means having the battery in place. Additionally, the car and the transmitter need to be turned on to make sure that the servo is in its neutral position, so the front wheels are pointing straight. In one video, someone said that SkyRC is not exactly the high standards of Hootie. I don't really understand what that meant. Let me know in the comments if you know. But just in case, I check the alignment of the pieces to make sure they indicate zero when I expect them to be at zero and it all checks out. Here I got a little confused as I noticed that the camber changes if I push the car up or down. Apparently this is called camber gain. This happens because the back arms are suspended by shocks and can move. So, depending on whether I lift or push, the shocks settle at different heights, which is why the angle changes. I've been told that the correct way is to push down and let it settle, so that's what I did. Okay, let's look at the readings. It's recommended to work on adjustments from back to front, starting with camber and then moving on to toe. Let's quickly switch the orientation of the rear stands. The B7 at the back has only one set of turnbuckles to adjust the rear camber, while the toe is fixed and can only be changed by adjusting the pills. Looks like I have too much negative camber on the rear. The wheels are leaning in by more than two degrees on each side. So I need to adjust that to the recommended baseline of one degree. To do that, I have to make the turnbuckles a little bit longer. Of course, I do that in the opposite direction first because I can never remember the orientation of the threads on those things. Otherwise, the process is relatively easy 
and I quickly set the desired angles. I then decide to check if the rear toe is what it is supposed to be. For some reason, it measures two degrees instead of three. I might have used the wrong pills during the assembly, but at least it is the same on both sides. Okay, now let's look at the front. This one is gonna be a little tricky because of the caster angle. Caster describes the angle of the whole block that holds the steering knuckle as it leans toward the rear of the vehicle. Because that block is not vertical, when I make a toe adjustment, it also affects the camber adjustment and vice versa. Because of that, I'm going to have to do a couple of iterations, going back and forth between camber and toe adjustments to make sure they are set the way I want. Just like in the back, I have too much camber in the front, so I need to reduce it first by elongating the front turnbuckles. Here you can observe another issue. I have a little bit of play in my front arms and steering. I try to make it all settle in the middle with my hands, but that makes the setup process harder. I thought something was wrong with my car, so I asked some experienced guys if that was okay. But after checking it, they said it is actually all good. After my first attempt at setting the camber, I switched to adjusting the toe of the front wheels. The goal was to set it at about one degree out on each side. However, the play in the arms and steering blocks resulted in about two degrees of wiggle on each side. So, when adjusting the toe, I had to account for that and manually shift between the most left and most right neutral positions to assume that the truth is somewhere in the middle, and it all has to be symmetric. Then I made another iteration on adjusting the camber. The angles became a little off after I adjusted the toe, so I had to readjust them. After setting both sides to one degree, it was time for another check of the toe angles. Some small adjustments were needed there as well, complicated by the wiggle again. The last check of the camber showed that it is all good this time, which means I am done. Hooray! So here it is, I set my baseline. In conclusion, setting up the camber and toe angles properly is crucial for the performance of your 110th RC buggy. While a multitude of factors may mean that I need a different optimal setup, Having a good baseline is the first step. After that, you can go to the track to test how it drives and then make symmetric tweaks to the turnbuckles right there to see what improves the handling. I hope this video has been helpful in understanding how to use the setup station and make these adjustments. If you have any tips or experiences to share, please leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more RC content. Thanks for watching and happy racing.